Hey guys, it's Chris Monk at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. You know, whenever I shoot these episodes, it's usually based on whatever it is I happen to be working on at that given moment. Uh, I don't have a, a script. Uh, I don't have creative consulting meetings or anything like that. Uh, I just kind of go with the flow. And what I'm doing today is I am applying a water-based clear coat finish on this particular guitar project. Uh, you may have seen this uh, posted on my uh, Instagram and my uh, Highline Guitars Facebook page, but I'm calling this one the meat guitar because it's got a printout of fatty looking meat on the front of it. And uh, it's been sealed with epoxy and now I'm putting down some water-based clear coats. And I got to thinking, you know, when it comes to water-based clear coats, people either love them or hate them. There's really no in-between. And I find that the people who love water-based clear coats are the people who've actually figured out how to apply them with the least issues and problems. Um, and the people who hate them, uh, they're trying to apply the water base the way they would uh, a product they're more familiar with, like uh, nitrocellulose lacquer. And you really can't put water-based clear coat finishes down the same way that you do a product like nitrocellulose. It just, you can have issues. And so I thought I would talk about the two biggest issues that I think people have when it comes to applying water-based clear coats. Now, I'm, I'm speaking fairly generally here because there's a you know, variety of different types of water-based finishes. But what I found is, is most, not all, but most of them, suffer from the same issues that you need to be aware of when you apply them. And those two issues are um, that milky bluish haze that can develop, especially noticeable over dark colors, and the ever-present orange peel, which seems to really be a problem uh, with water-based finishes. Now, it is possible to deal with both of those not only as they happen, but you can also prevent them from happening in the first place. So what I need to do is kind of give you um, an explanation based on my experiences with water-based as well as um, when I've talked to other folks who use it, uh, professionals and uh, people with a lot of experience. So first of all, let's talk about the milky bluish haze. What is that and why does it happen? Well, with your water-based products, uh, you've got a number of different uh, chemicals within that product. You've got um, usually a, uh, it's like a polymer resin, and that can be uh, a polyurethane, a, an acrylic, or a combination of the two. And that's dissolved in glycol ethers. Um, and that is then in turn suspended in water. Well, when you spray it, the water evaporates right away and then what remains is that uh, polymer and the, the ethers, the glycol ethers. And it's that stuff which, when um, applied heavily, can start to develop that milky bluish haze. So if that happens, what you have to do as soon as you notice it is to stop spraying, put the gun down, and let that guitar sit for a couple of days. Those chemicals are going to evaporate out of the finish and will take that milky bluish haze with it. However, if that milky bluish haze remains and as soon as the guitar is dry to a touch, you put another coat over it, you could be trapping that milky bluish haze into the finish. That's not a good thing. So if it does happen, you want to let that guitar sit and let it dry and cure out and get rid of that before you start applying additional coats. So how do you uh, avoid it in the first place? Well, it should be pretty obvious. You don't want to spray heavy coats. Uh, you need to dial your spray gun back so that you're not putting so much fluid onto the surface. And if you do that and just put down light coats, you're going to uh, be able to avoid that milky bluish haze. And of course, that does mean you may have to put more coats down to build them up. But
but really what you should be doing is before you even spray your clear coats is you should put down you know four to five coats of a sanding sealer and then sand that smooth and then apply your clear coats because then you can apply fewer coats of the clear and they go down smoother now speaking of applying the finish in a smooth uh, surface and, and achieving a smooth surface like a glass like surface how do you deal with the orange peel? And orange peel is fairly common with a lot of the different uh, water-based clear coats out there. And when it occurs, it's basically the same sort of thing as what happens with nitrocellulose. And the difference is, is with nitrocellulose, and this is why people like it so much, is when you get you know, orange peel or runs or drips or anything like that, you just let it dry for about 20 minutes and then you just spray another wet coat and it melts away and you can fix your, your problems. That's not necessarily the case with a water-based finish. When you start to develop that, that orange peel texture, every subsequent coat that you put over, it's just gonna keep building that orange peel up. Now it's not fatal because if you, you know, put down, say 10 to 12 coats of clear, you can easily level sand it out and it's not that big a deal. But if you're like me, you wanna to try to reduce the number of steps necessary to get to that high gloss finish. And one that, that, that step of doing the level finishing or the level sanding um, can take a lot of time if you've got the orange peel. So I wanna to try to finish up with as absolutely flat and level a surface as I can so I don't have to drop down to like a 600 grit. I can instead start with 800, maybe even 1000 grit to get my surface leveled before I start to polish and buff it. So why do we get the orange peel? Well, when you're spraying the water-based finish, um, and it doesn't really matter what kind of a gun you're using, whether it's a siphon feed or a gravity feed, when you pull the fluid, when, the, when you pull back on the trigger, um, the fluid comes out of the uh, cap and hits that uh, airflow that's coming out of um, the, this part of the cap here and the momentum of that blows it forward so that it lands on the surface or strikes the surface of uh, your guitar now in certain situations depending on how you've got the gun adjusted the distance from the, the spray gun or the distance from the surface that atomized fluid can actually dry in the air before it hits the surface and when that happens it's kind of clumps up in the finish and you get that that texture so if it happens you're only with water base your only solution is to to level sand out that coat and then adjust your uh, spray gun and your technique so that the next coats that you put down will go down smooth so what do we have to do uh, to avoid the orange peel in the first place? Well, what you have to do is look at three different things. Uh, first of all, you've got to look at the viscosity of the product that you're spraying. You have to look at the equipment that you're using to spray, and then your technique and how you're spraying it down. So let's first of all consider the equipment that we're using. When it comes to spraying water-based, what I have found is that the best equipment you can use is a you know fairly decent size compressor, something in the three to five horsepower range, twenty to you know eighty gallon tank, and then a decent um, like an HVLP spray gun. Now the reason why a compressor uh, is an ideal choice is because the air that comes out of the tank is basically the same temperature as the ambient uh, room temperature that you're working in. So if it's 70 degrees, the air coming out of the tank is about 70 degrees. Uh, in other words, the air coming out of the tank is neither hot nor cold. It's, it's right uh, in the middle and or whatever the, the room temperature is. The, what you want to avoid is you want to avoid air that's coming out of your gun that's heated. Now you're probably wondering how would you know the air get heated. Well, if you're using a turbine type HVLP system, which is what I use, this is the, eight, the Earl X 5500. Uh, there's also the uh, Fuji spray systems, the Apollo spray systems, and I think there's a few other out there. 
those turbine units have a tendency to generate a lot of heat and they heat the air that's going through the hose and into your gun and when the air is hot or warm as it atomizes the fluid that air evaporates faster than if it's room temperature or cooler so if you're spraying warm air it's going to that, that, that um, those atomized droplets are going to uh, dry before they hit the surface. The air is, or the, the moisture, the, the liquid, the water that's in the, the uh, vapor is going to evaporate in that short distance from the gun to the surface, believe it or not. And that's what's going to cause your orange peel. So ideally you want to use a compressor and a, a good quality HVLP gun. Now if you are using a turbine system like I use, you have to uh, adjust the viscosity and then uh, your technique. So that leads me into discussing uh, what the viscosity is. Now most of these products that we spray, the manufacturers will tell you you can spray them straight from the can. They're at the uh, proper viscosity. And that's true. However, if you do run into that problem of the orange peel, what you may want to consider doing is thinning the product out. and you should always follow the manufacturer's recommendation for thinning the material. In most cases, I find it's uh, adding 10 to 20 percent of, of water, distilled water, um, to the amount of uh, uh, material that you're spraying. So if you're, you know, a quart, which is 32 ounces, you're going to be looking at adding uh, 3 to 6 ounces of water to thin it. No more. And you always want to start at the lower end, so you would start with 10%. And if that's still not doing the trick, you'd increase a little bit more. And some of the products that are available, like for this particular guitar, I'm using General Finish's Enduro Pre-Cat Lacquer. And General Finish's makes a product which is called Enduro Extender. And this is uh, essentially a product they recommend that you can add to it to thin it and to lengthen the time of drying. And what that will do is, is it will allow you to spray the product and because it, it is thinner and it is going to take longer to dry, there's a better chance that the atomized particles are going to hit the surface wet instead of being dry. So that will help uh, go a long way to solving that problem with the orange peel. The other thing you can do, and this is also important, and um, something that, I, that I, I learned the other day that I thought, wow, that's kind of interesting. I didn't realize that. And that is, you want it, with these HVLP turbine sprayers, you want to hold your gun fairly close to the surface as you spray. Um, in fact, some of the pros that I talked to said, keep it less than six inches from the surface, you know, sort of in the four to five inch range. That's really close. So what you've got to do, since you've thinned the product, is you've really got to dial back the volume that the, uh, is flowing out of the gun. So you want to adjust your sprayer so that you're just putting out a very thin, light coat. And that way you can hold the gun a lot closer. And then you're going to have to adjust your technique by moving the gun fast enough to get down even coverage but slow enough, or I should say slow enough to get even coverage, but fast enough to avoid runs and drips. And if you do those things, I think you'll find that you can avoid the orange peel that typically occurs because ultimately at the end, you want that last coat that you put down to go down as smooth as possible so that when you, it comes time to level sand, it takes far less work you can start at a much finer grit, which means fewer scratches and makes it so much easier to buff out. And once you do these things, I think you'll find water-based is the way to go. So that's all I've got for this week. And next week, who knows what I'll talk about. Uh, I'll probably still be working on this one. And I'm going to be starting another uh, build here. Well, actually, I've already started it, but um, I may be featuring it in a future episode. So uh, we will... See you soon, and until next time, take care.